Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem and we're in Dungeon Draft. Hmm, weren't expecting that, were you? Uh, right, I've been playing. I've been playing with Dungeon Draft. Uh, I have purchased myself a copy and having a little play today. And I have created a map. It's really simple. It's really basic. Um, but actually, I've done more than that. I've created several maps. So this is the Traveller's Rest. Uh, so I've got this main map, uh, but I've also created a ground floor for the inn, a first floor, a roof, and a cellar, because I'm putting this together as an encounter. Um, so I've done all of that in Dungeon Draft. Now what's important here is I have only used the default assets in Dungeon Draft. Um, so while um, you can link to places like Forgotten Adventures, Two Minute Tabletop, uh, Crosshead Studios, I think, is the other main one. Um, but there's other there's other ones as well, and you can import your own assets. I haven't linked to and used any of those assets. These are just Dungeon Draft ones, and there's a reason for that, and it's all to do with copyright. And while I can show you what I've done using all of those other elements without any drama whatsoever, what I can't do is give it to you. Uh, and that's what I want to do. Not that you necessarily want to use it, but uh, I've done that anyway. So here I am in Foundry VTT, and I have created this scene. I've called it the Traveler's Rest, uh, and it sits on here. I need an actor. Where's my actor here? Right. So I've got Bob, the non-existent actor, uh, and I've just got this terrain here. We see we've got some rain on. I uh, just, oh, I should have said right at the very beginning, <laughs> This is version 12. Well, I'm in version 12 here. Let me show you this and then we can walk through what I did and how I did it. So I've drawn this map in Dungeon Draft and now I've got this place. I can go up to Windows and I can see into the inn by looking through any of these windows if I like. Now note that when I'm away from the windows you can see the roof. When I come to the windows Anywhere I can't see still shows roof. Anywhere else is showing me the interior. So I can walk all the way around. Oh, look, I can see into the kitchens, etc. But there's no windows around this side. Come on, let's go back around the front and have a wander in side. And you're probably thinking this isn't very exciting. It's just a map, mate. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're all right. <laughs> I'm not very artistic. For those of you who've been following this channel for a while, have seen me trying to do maps and things. I've done a thing, all right? <laughs> just <laughs> give me my moment. Um, we can wander around, open doors, and again, note that we've got the roof in place in areas we can't see. I can walk back out here. I'm now behind the bar. Uh, we've got a little kitchen. Note there's some lighting in here. There is a cellar. I can go down this trap door, and I'm into the cellar. There's also a secret door which takes us through into here. Uh, I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, go back up the ladder and actually I can come around this side. There's a lavatory just off there uh, and I can go up these stairs to the first floor where we have some bedrooms. A nice one here. Uh, a common room for the adventurers when they can't afford or don't want to pay. Uh, and all of these bedrooms and you can look out all of these windows and things. So it's not a huge map. Um, it's just on little encounter and what I was thinking was is the amount of times that we just want to pull something you know a, a little side adventure maybe your characters are traveling from one place to another they've got quite a distance to go and travel is something that's really kind of weird in D&D and people either get really bored while doing it or they kind of skip it and then we've got random encounters that aren't necessarily very thematic so I'm going to, for me and my games, create a series of uh, like side adventures. For those of you who've been around for a while, when we did Stormwreck Isle uh, and we had there, there, Owlbear and a few other encounters that were just sat to one side, ready to pull out, um, all pre-created. But they, we don't need to use them for Stormwreck Isle. We can use them for anywhere we want and just pull them out. So I thought I would create this. You know, they need to stop somewhere for the night and they find this in. Now, what you may have noticed, for those of you who've been paying attention, if I go to my Manage Modules and show you what we've got installed, I'm using, again, this is Foundry version 12. 
I've got Ripper's wall height and Ripper's levels both installed and they are working perfectly brilliant work so fast to get those updated uh, the lib wrapper you need for that you don't need ripper 93's module hub um, it, it wants to install it automatically i like to have it on there because it straight away prompts me when he's made little changes and stuff uh, but what i've got at the top here is cg encounter bundle uh, so I actually created this in a different game world and bundled it as a compendium package that I then installed into this test world that I've got here. So this is in a position where, fingers crossed, I can actually send it to you and you can access it and let me show you the compendium. So it brings in a compendium. I have need to tidy it up, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, CG encounter scenes. If I open this compendium, there's Traveler's Rest. And all you need to do is drag that straight over to your scenes. That's what I did. Um, and it pops it in there and it's straight away good to go. All right. So as long as you've got levels and wall height installed, uh, all you need is that module, activate that as well, and you can you'll have access to that compendium, pull it over, dump the scene directly into your scenes folder over here, and then it's active straight away uh, so it comes with the pictures it comes with the tiles for the different levels it comes with the uh, with the lighting let me show you the lighting so there's a whole bunch of lighting in here uh, and I've got this set that if it starts to get dark so let me just uh, darken that down as it gets darker you will see something that happens hey the fire comes on and then the torches come on as well so I've got that set up that it will automatically do that for us um, so we go in, we've got a nice homely feeling uh, and it's a lovely warm kind of feel to it. Uh, there aren't lights in every room, um, but that's okay. They can take torches with them or whatever. Uh, upstairs, uh, shortcut them across here. If we go upstairs, we've got some candle lights on this table here, but there aren't lights in the bedrooms. Now I did go to the first floor. I did put bedside lights in all of these rooms so that you know you can turn them on and off if you want to but they're not automatic so they're not going to come on automatically when it gets dark if I make that daylight again now you'll see those lights went off and on the ground floor the rest of these lights went off so automated lighting for you so you don't have to worry about it if they arrive late at night you can just go flap it down to being dark uh, transition it through and the lights will come on and they've got a nice homely in to come to but what's the point of this so apart from the fact it's just somewhere they can come there is something afoot at the traveler's rest so i haven't yet added in actors and bar staff and things like that i will do so um, and then repackage this so i'm not going to issue this out for you guys yet um, but uh, i will do that and i'll put in you know some members of staff and things like that but there is something afoot here if we go down to the cellar Okay, so after the PCs have enjoyed their very tasty, slightly oddly tasty meal, that's a bit like, hang on a minute, a bit, a bit suspicious. Um, if they uh, do some investigations and things, listen to local rumours, they potentially can find themselves uh, coming down to the cellar uh, where they find a secret door that takes them into this chamber. And in this chamber, there is a butchering trough here, which has some bones in it. There is a bone pit down here. Uh, there's other light sources here, by the way, that don't come on automatically, but they're there if the characters want to light them. Um, and there's some cells. So what I thought that's having, happening at the Traveler's Rest, it's going to be pretty much in the middle of nowhere, but it's going to be on a trade route. The meat that they're generally feeding when they get low on supplies is they are eating travellers. Okay, so the innkeeper and his family are cannibals. Um, it's only a little side thing, a little bit of combat, a little bit of investigation. They might just stay the night and then naff off and not do anything at all. It's fine. You can use it just as an inn. They never need to know about the secret door. But I thought this just made it a little bit interesting. It's something to, for them to do, a little segue, a bit of investigation. So I am going to fill this out a bit. Like I said, I'm going to put some characters in. I might put a prisoner in there that you can or can't have um, available to talk to if they come down this far, whatever it might be. Um, 
Now notice this is purely cannibalism. I haven't gone with a sacrificing on the altar kind of style thing for why they are taking people. It literally is. They've got the taste for humans and they've got a ready supply. It's a, you know, it's, it's an inn on a trade route. Um, they've got a ready supply of lonely travelers wandering by who accidentally end up in pies. Wasn't supposed to be alliterative, but it was <laughs> poetic. Okay, so um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to cut this video here uh, and uh, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I made this um, in just a few moments and we'll do that from scratch. So I will see you in just a few moments. Okay, so uh, I'm back. And I just very briefly just wanted to check a few things. I want to uh, try and make this as smooth as possible for you guys. Uh, again, this is my active modules. I don't need CG Encounter Bundle because I'm going to show you how to build it rather than just pulling it out of there. But I need levels, I need lib wrapper, and I need wall height, which I've already got. So I've created myself a new scene called Resty Place 2. Uh, I'm going to go to configure and all I'm going to do is find my background image now for me I've got it in my modules because uh, I need to make sure I'm packaging stuff properly I'm going to go for the traveler's rest outside and I can bring that in um, let's bring that in straight away here it is lovely jubbly uh, and then I can obviously go in configure and do the usual stuff now um, my grid here is not quite right uh, 150 pixels is what i set my image to so that should work nicely um, save my changes good that's fine so my map is gridless by the way so if you want to turn the grid off completely um, you can just turn it off there we go it's gone no grid at all all right, so happy to do that if you want. So 150 pixels is what I went for. Makes it nice and easy for gridding my stuff up again. Uh, and for lighting, uh, I have got global illumination on. I want to put my darkness level to 0 0.9. Um, no, not for here, I don't. What am I doing? I'll come back to that. I'm going to put some ambience on. I'm going to put weather effect on. I'm going to put rainstorm on just so it's easier for you guys to see in the video. Um, so this is my basic scene here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new region. Um, I've done that the weird way around. I'm going to create a new region. I'm going to cover it over here. I haven't got this snapping to corners. Hang on a second. Hang on a moment. So you've gone wrong already. Professional at work. <laughs> Shut up you lot. <laughs> you know how it is. Right, I've got snapping on now, that's better. So I want that, that's fantastic. Um, but I also want that bit down there. So this region I'm going to call uh, inside. It doesn't matter what I call it, that's just what I'm going to call it for this. Okay, so I've got that covered. Um, and of course, I've now got two rectangles. I've got this main one and then that little one I added on at the bottom. So I've now got those and I can add my behaviors. My behaviors here are going to be suppress weather so we know that works so straight away no weather on the inside it's why i wanted to put the heavy rain on so you again you can see that working uh, and i want to adjust my darkness level uh, i want to darken it um i think i put it about there i will check exactly what my settings were in a moment because uh yeah it's a little effect look i can do it right now if i uh if i go over to this scene Let's have a look, see exactly what settings I use, because I did play with them a fair bit. Um, just darkness level, I did have that set to 0 0.2, so darken to 0 0.2. Um, oh, why is that temporarily disabled? Interesting. Hmm, okay. Bit weird. I don't know why that was uh, disabled. I didn't disable at any point. Um, but right, so we've got this in here, uh, and that adjust level was down to 0 0.2 can't <laughs> gotta get <it> exact <laughs> and update that region all right so if i come back off here we've got nothing happening on the inside which is good 
no rain. So we need to put on our levels. So let me open left hand side. I'm going to open our levels editor, which gives us our layer tool up here. Just make that a bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, I want to turn off the stairs drawing, but I want to click on this plus to add a new level. This level um, and click edit. This level is going to be the ground floor. Okay, and that is going to be from zero to 10 feet. I'm going to add another floor. First floor. Yes, Americans, I know you kind of go first floor, second floor, whereas we in the UK tend to go ground and first floor, but whatever. Uh, and I need to add the basement or cellar, depending on your preference. And that is going to be from minus 10 to zero. Okay, so it's down here. All right, so I'll just rearrange those into be the order. So we've got ground, first floor, and our cellar. Uh, stop editing that. What I need to do is put in my, so here's my ground floor. I'm going to uh, put in my next tile. Um, and I'm going to put in the one for the cellar. So I've got this mask here, which is really useful. So the region shows me where my tile is. It's not a tile, but where my inside is above. Uh, and I just need to make sure I'm pulling from wherever I've saved it my correct tile. And I'm going to line that up, bosh, with that corner right there. Great. So this is it. That's it. That's my tile in, which is lovely. Now, what I do want to do is where I've got this ladder here, I'm just going to lock this so I don't accidentally keep moving it. <laughs> okay, you've seen me do that many times. I want my ladder to go up. So I'm going to click on this place drawing as stairs and highlight that. I can then go to my drawings and I can draw this here right over that ladder. Now I'm going to edit this text just to say ladder uh, and make it a little bit smaller so it fits uh, there we go um, that should be fine don't want to close that go back to here uh, and that should work perfectly and that should enable us to go up and down all right so now i need to do the first floor so i'll make sure i'm clicked on first floor over here i'm going to turn off my stairs thing i want to get my next tile out which is easier to place because obviously I've got this one to do it over. It's this one here. Drag that out. Just make sure that's nestled directly over the top. Lovely. So now I've got the ground floor and I've got the first floor. Now on the ground floor, again, I'm going to click that place drawing as stairs. I'm going to go to my drawing and in this bottom corner down here, I'm going to just change the text. Just call it stairs lovely that's there easy peasy okay so now when I walk onto that tile it will pop me here to continue up the stairs for the rest of it which is great uh, right scooby dooby doo uh, so on the first floor what I need to do I'm going to turn off my drawings of stairs again I need to put on my roof so let me go to roof placements so highlight roofs and I can go back to my tiles um, I have not put walls in, which is interesting, but it should it should work fine, even though I haven't put the walls in yet. And I should be able to drag my roof in and line that up properly. There we go, and I can turn that off. So I've got my cellar, my ground floor, my first floor, and my roof as well. Now, the roof is sometimes a little bit tricky. We've seen that before, um, that it doesn't necessarily... I've closed my levels. Don't do that. Um, not necessarily what I wanted. So hang on, let me check my tiles. This one is, oh, there isn't a ground floor one. Of course there's not because I'm using the actual image. Things I forget, even though I've just done it. <laughs> okay, so we've got all of those things in. That should be absolutely fine. Let's find, bring ourselves an actor and drag Bob out here. Uh, so Bob should be able to walk into here, but but nothing's happening. That roof is still in the way, okay? So we need to make sure we sort that roof out. Um, so with that roof on, we should be able to click this. Now this is often, sometimes, slightly tricky, and I've, I found a little bit of an issue with it. Um, 
strict range allow sites if enabled the tile will not block site i think that's what i wanted on um I'm going to go check my settings on the other one at the mo in a moment. I am going to do exactly that to see see because I had to fiddle with it a little bit. So let's go back to here. Okay, go to the first floor. Look at this roof tile. What settings did I end up using? So overhead tile elevation 20 to make sure it's on there. It was this one. It was this occlusion mode. That's what it was that I had to fiddle with. So the more we do these things, of course, the uh, the better we'll get with them. So I'm on my first floor, I'm on my roof, double click this, overhead, always visible. I don't want it always visible. So you can have fade, you can have radial. I actually like vision token uh, field of vision. I like that one. So if I update that, go back to Bob now, that roof disappears because he can see everywhere now the reason why he can't see he, he can't see the roof at all is because i've got no walls in so it's not giving anything um, to stop him seeing anything at all so let's go down to the ground let's smack some walls in um whoops i don't want to do that yep being special as always <laughs> uh, i'm gonna finish doing the walls um, i'm just gonna do a speed run for it in the edit and uh, i'll see you in a moment I think I've got everything there pretty easy peasy uh, obviously with the windows and things you can go around and you can adjust those how you want them to work for you um, I'm just going to leave them at default for this instance so we've got a cellar we've got a ground floor we've got a first floor and now if we pop back to Bob uh, you can see that he can walk in he can't because he can't open the door why can't you open the door Bob <laughs> I, made, I made that window <laughs> Ah oh dear, there we go. Right, let's try it again, shall we, Bob? Okay, open the door, we can walk in. Oh, um, Bob, what are you doing up there? Hang on a minute. Bob is on the wrong floor. That's part of the issue, which means I've just created a... I've just turned a window into a door on the first floor. Didn't mean to do that, but there we go. Uh, obviously, I can fix that really easily. So when Bob is on the ground floor, he can see the roof. But if he looks through a window, he can see the inside. And that's because when we're looking at that roof tile, we had that, um, we changed it to the token vision one rather than just fade. He can come upstairs. This all works lovely. All right. So uh, that's pretty much it, to be honest, isn't it? I mean, it's once you've got the maps and stuff, um, you know walls are walls <laughs> they don't take very long at all uh it's now down to the lighting 
Now, what did I do with the lighting? I'm just going to pick one of these. Let's put let's put this in here. With the lighting, what I did was uh, I just say it's 20 and 10, just for the sake of it, just for its range. Constrained by walls, always we can choose another color. I'm only going to do the one here. Um, that will do. Blimey, that's bright. Um, but <laughs> we can turn that down a little bit if we want to. Uh, now, darkness activation range. So this is at what point does it come on? So if the darkness is anywhere between no darkness and full darkness, the light will be on. But if I change that to say 0.8, it just went off immediately because it's daytime. So until dark, and not until darkness hits 0 0.8 will that come on. So that's what I've done. It's just at the bottom here, the darkness activation range. Now, of course, under light animation, we've looked at these before, but I'm aware that there are people watching who've only just come to Foundry. Um, and hopefully you're able to keep up and at least see what I'm doing here, because I'm going at a reasonably fast pace for people who don't know what they're doing. But um, it's getting that balance. Don't want to hold up the newbies. Uh, sorry, don't want to go too fast for the newbies, but also don't want to bore um, the people who've seen this stuff before. OK, let's update that ambient light source. Um, and what have I done with him? Oh, there he is. He's outside. Oops. Oh, he's outside upstairs again. That uh, That's my fault for uh, not doing him correctly. Ground floor, Bob, please. Thank you. Um, so that light is not on that we've just created. But again, uh, if I make it dark, Bob hangs around here. He can watch it slowly get darker. And as it reaches that, minimum threshold that light should pop on there we go all right um, what you will notice though is it never gets completely dark here all right so in the middle of the night i've shut uh, shut myself in a room with no light sources no windows uh, we can still see and the player can still see so if you want to you know i can open the doors and move off and things like that if you want to make it completely dark there is one other thing you can do to do that and that is back in the scene settings, I'm fairly sure it was, was to do with the darkness level so uh, and the global illumination. So a darkness threshold between 1 and 0. When the scene darkness exceeds this, it global automation, uh, global illumination is automatically disabled. So if I change that to 0 0.95, that means it will get really, really dark. Um, let me reset the uh, reset fog of war. He's about to disappear into darkness. He can see nothing. So once it actually gets to almost pitch black, it turns off global vision. So for him, it actually is pitch black, as it should be. He's in a room with no lights in the middle of the night. Uh, of course, um, we can turn those lights back on. And he'll be able to see again as the global illumination comes up. All right. And then he can wander off and go look at. Oh, look, I can see outside. Uh, and he can peer out of these windows. Um, now, obviously, I just only did the one light there. Easiest thing to do, copy, paste. Stick it wherever you've got the torches and things like that. I did a different one for the fire and I had that come on slightly earlier. The idea is as its sun starts to go down, it starts to get a bit chilly. They can put the fire on uh, before they need to light the torches. And I put a couple of lights over here in this kitchen area. Now you'll notice they've got normal food here. It's only in the cellar where we've got the uh, effectively the butchery table. <laughs> Um, and of course, yeah, there's torches there that you can put that illumination on if you want to. Uh, so that's it. I just wanted to showcase that. That's what I've done. Created a nice little thing. What I do want to do is create some NPCs for this. Uh, if you've got suggestions for NPCs, family makeup, maybe they are more than, maybe that's, I don't know, maybe they're a family of werewolves or something. Uh, drop your ideas in the comments before I go and create NPCs. But what I would like to do is create some NPCs and add a bit more flavor to this. And that way, when um, then I can package it all together for you. Uh, for those who want it, of course, you don't have to. Um, and then you'll be able to just install um, this uh, CG encounter scenes. Uh, and you'll have access to Traveler's Rest for whenever you want it. And then we can move on and we can do other stuff. Uh, we can create other encounters, other interesting things. Or, I don't know, a wizard's tower, uh, you know, uh, 
in a, a, an attacked caravan, whatever we want to do, just for those kind of roadside encounters between traveling and stuff like that. And of course, experiment with some of the foundry tools, not just the version 11 ones, but other things we've got as well. Uh, because we still obviously, understandably, uh, absolutely understandably, we don't have access to all of our mods yet. Um, they are slowly ticking over green. <laughs> Ripper is, I don't know what Ripper's doing. He's not sleeping, that's for sure. He's absolutely pounding his way through stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, lots of these things are, are coming up to speed. But we know that MIDI QOL is a big thing for a lot of people. I strongly recommend if you haven't already upgraded to version 12, don't do it if you're expecting to use MIDI QOL. Okay, because it's not there. It's not ready yet. Uh, same as Monk stuff, it is a little bit behind. Um, so if you want to use Monk's, uh, obviously Monk's got a lot of work to do around the active tile triggers because of the conflicts with the version 12. So that's probably going to take a little while to do. And we know MIDI QOL is quite a big job. Um, Gambit's pre-made. I want to make a comment about Gambit's pre-made. He's updated it. So he did make, I know, another one of those people is just like, well, do you never sleep? Um, he's made several updates since he commented on a video the other day looking at the attack of opportunity in particular. And when we did that video, we looked at the template thing that wasn't brilliant. Uh, and we had to use, I think I've probably still got it installed, walled templates to kind of hide that template. Well, that's no longer a thing. If you're still on version 11 of Foundry uh, and you go watch that video, you'll see the some of the challenges we had with the template. He's fixed it. So instead of using an additional module to deal with that, he's made it all into one. Now, I can't go and do another video on that at the moment because it's only version 11. So it's not been updated to version 12 yet. I mean, give him about another 30 seconds. <laughs> it will probably be done. Um <laughs> But uh, I think he's got to wait for other things like MIDI QOL and stuff like that to be updated. I suspect that might not be true. I may have just made that up. Um, but yeah, Gambit's pre-made. He's, he's made those updates. He's improved it since we did that video, like just unbelievably quick, uh, which is good. All right, I'm going to stop talking about stuff off topic. Uh, yeah, leave a like, uh, leave a comment. If you've got ideas of how we can populate this, um, uh, or other encounter ideas that you would like us to look at uh, we can do that yeah and if you're not subscribed it would be appreciated if you did so it really helps out the channel thank you very much you take care i'm going to go back and play with art stuff again see ya